Photobomb. Complete photobomb. <laughs> There's an Irish leprechaun running around on stage five of the Breckenridge time trial at the USA Pro Challenge. Watch out for him and watch out for the riders today as they tackle this pretty crazy course. Jumping in the car with director Mike Tamayo to watch Katie Hall in the time trial today. So we're here with Katie Hall after the Breckenridge time trial, the first stage for the women here at the USA Pro Challenge. Awesome to see some women's racing up here this year, sharing in the amazing crowds and the great atmosphere that we have. Katie, how was the time trial out there? We're at 10,000 feet, pretty pretty tough course out there? Pretty tough course. I live at like 17 feet above sea level. <laughs> so we often talk about the preparations before the time trial and about the pacing side of mm -hmm. things. Uh, we use a program called Best Bike Split. How have you found that in terms of applying your uh, intensity throughout the course? Um, but I love Best Bike Splits. It really helps me to figure out where to go hard on the course and where to conserve. So you have your Pioneer Power Meter on the So are you looking at your Power Meter during the race to gauge these efforts? Yeah, today I did. Usually at sea level I won't really look at it because I'll, I'll just judge from my feelings, sensations. But here it's so easy to go too hard and you can't recover. And I used my power meter to keep myself in check. How difficult is it to ride such different parts of the course? So very flat at first and then, you know, some really steep climbing. Yeah. Uh, it was hard to decide on equipment, I think, because some people were riding road bikes because that climb was so steep. And so for you, when you're approaching this, what's mm -hmm. the goal, power or speed? Uh, fastest speed overall, yeah. She's been well taught, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yeah, no problem. Our show for today is Mr. Henrik Redont. What are we doing today? We're going to win! <laughs> yes! Who are we following? We're following Jani Brajkovic, one uh, ex-world champion time trial. And let's hope he has an amazing race. But it's going to be hard to beat Mr. Uh, Dennis Rohan. Let's do this. Mariani Brajkovic, 304. Okay, so we're here with Yanni Brakovic. We were following him before in the team car. Uh, di very difficult time trial today. It seems like the wind keeps shifting all the time. Does it make it difficult to gauge your efforts out on the course? Yeah, it was it's, it was shifting all the time. So uh, yeah, on the on the way down it was tail, and then it was headwind and tail again. This particular course, it's uh, very technical for a time trial just in regards to the pacing, right? Like you've got some flat roads, you've got a lot of wind to deal with, but then you've got a really steep climb, which is not always normal for a time trial. How do you choose to do your pacing out there? Do you use anything or do you just feel your effort while you're out there? Yeah, the, I think the biggest problem is altitude because I would say uh, the power was maybe even 20% lower than it would be at sea level. So uh, we had to consider that uh, and then save something for the for the final climb. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. You, good ride today, good ride this week, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So here we have Katie Hall's file from today's stage, and now we're going to look at it in greater detail. This is a program called Best Bike Split, and in here we put in all of her parameters, her riding position, the, the amount of aerodynamic drag that she has, we put in what her threshold power is, we put in uh, parameters uh, like what we expect her to be able to do, and we use the actual course from this individual time trial. So we, we download a GPS file and put this into the system. And it estimates the best way for Katie to approach this time trial to, to pace the event. So where she should, should she push really hard? Where should she, should she take it a little bit easier? So this is all the parameters that we're looking at here for Katie for today's race. This was what we did last night in preparation. This takes into account all the wind conditions that uh, obviously crop up and possibly could change throughout the day. This is the plan that, she, that comes out. You know, this right here is the block powers of what she needs to be doing at certain parts of the race. So here we estimated that Katie would be able to hold approximately 200 average watts throughout the duration of the course which equates to a normalized power of 212, 213 watts. This is taking into account the high altitude here in Breckenridge of uh, t over 10,000 feet. 
interestingly, we can go down here and look at the cheat sheet. And this really is something that I like the writers to focus on and just take into account what sort of powers that they should be pushing for them. And this is individual to everybody. And at what point should they be pushing harder on the course? And what, at what point should they be saving a little bit of energy on the course? So now we are looking at Katie's Pioneer file post-stage on the Cyclosphere side. Here you can see the difficulty of this course for a time trial with the elevation. You know, it was decreasing at first and then from there up until three to uh, four kilometers to go, I believe, it was climbing all the way to the top of the same Moonstone Hill climb that the riders faced yesterday. Something that could possibly be very useful for the future in order to fit somebody very efficiently, biomechanically efficiently on a bike is using the pedaling monitor in this regard. So here on the different points of the pedal stroke, the Pioneer power meter highlights how much power they're pushing through at each one of these marks around the clock. So this is actually looking at the seated position and you can see that she's applying power throughout the, most of the pedal stroke there. And then when she's out of the seat, there's a lot more emphasis on the downstroke part of it because it's very hard to pull up when you're standing up. And we can also see that her pedaling efficiency is pretty consistently at 50% throughout, throughout all the races that she does. Over on the Training Picks WKO software, I'm now looking at Katie's detailed file. This is her, her race during the time trial today. And as you can see... We predicted a time of 22 minutes and 21 seconds in best bike split and her race duration was actually 22 minutes and 27 seconds. So it was pretty spot on and it was great insight for her today. Her power was a little bit down than what we thought. That also means that she's a little bit more aerodynamic than what we put into the system. So that's something that we just go back and, and tweak a little bit for future use. Next we're going to have a look at Yanni Brakovic's file from today. So looking at Yanni Brakovic's file from today's stage, the time trial here, um, it, it's evident to see straight away how consistent his power is. You know, this goes back and looks at his pedigree. He was the under-23 world time trial champion back in 2004. Uh, I believe at least two times national champion as well of, of his home country. Uh, and we can see this yellow line here, how consistent it is throughout the course of the race. Uh, looking over here at this VI, which is the visibility, uh, the variability index, at 1.01, .01, it means that his variance is only 1% from the beginning to the end of the stage. So it shows it's very consistent, and that's a great application of power uh, in terms of you know getting the best out of his performance. If that number is higher, he will be burning more matches throughout you know the middle parts of, of the race, and he won't have as much power left for the for the finale. So that's stage five done here in Breckenridge, the time trial of the USA Pro Challenge. It was great to catch up with Katie Hall and watch her time trial and to review her data, also to watch Yanni Brakovic out there as he was racing in the men's race. Big day, lots of racing going on. Tomorrow down to Loveland for the start and racing over to Fort Collins, which I think is actually going to be a harder stage than what a lot of people realise. There's a climb midway through the race that gets quite steep, so... It may be a sprint, but it's going to be a reduced field sprint, I believe. Let's wait and see. Looking forward to that tomorrow. Catch you then.